Tell me, um, as a graduate of the residency program, you know, just kind of think back, what, why mm -hmm. did you decide to do this? Why did you decide to do the residency? Well, I am a career changer, so I had practiced law previously and was interested in getting into education. My parents are both teachers, um, so it's sort of been on the back of my mind for years, and um, I really was just trying to figure out research ways to make that transition professionally and get licensed and certified and get the training I needed to teach. So just started researching these types of programs that are kind of tailored toward career changers. Came across Denver Teacher Residency, which was kind of the, the biggest and the only game in town at the time and made some phone calls to other people that had been through the program and heard good things about it. Um, so it seemed like the it seemed like the best and sort of the most efficient way to, to make that career change. So some people, you know, choose to go to this like summer boot camp, you know, six weeks mm -hmm. or versus a year long. Why did you choose to do the year long uh, classroom embedded yeah. experience? Well, I was really drawn to the to being able to get a master's degree. So the Denver Teacher Residency Program you know, offers this one-year intensive master's program uh, in urban education, and I knew that being a career changer, I just I had not had any education training, formally or informally. So I liked the the fact that the longer program offered a year of you know professional training, academic training of sort of the theory, and then also. At the same time, you're getting that practical experience in the classroom. So, um, I didn't not having had any experience in teaching. I didn't really want to do a fast track type program. I wanted a, a really thorough program, which DTR is. Yeah. So, what about your residency experience? Like now that you're in the classroom mm -hmm. and, and a graduate of the program, like looking back, you know. Can you name something that, gosh, because of the residency, I was able to do this when I, you know, as a first year, second year teacher? Oh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so much of what I do every day is um, directly related to the experience I got as a resident. So, um, I mean, one example would just be the first two weeks of school. When you're a new teacher, that's probably one of the more nerve wracking parts of, you know, this career change is just meeting all your new students and how you're going to establish all these routines and processes in your classroom. And having had that experience for a full year with my mentor teacher, I got to see how she started the school year, you know, what she did during the school year and how she wrapped up the school year. So I knew sort of roughly what I wanted to do those first two weeks of school and was able to just kind of modify the things I'd done during my residency and bring those to my new classroom. Mm -hmm. Who was your mentor? Ariana Gutierrez at Sabin okay. Elementary. Okay, I don't know her. But when you can you tell us a little bit about how you worked with your mentor? Sure. Um, it was a, I was in a fifth grade classroom last year, and it was um, all subjects. So um, you know, it was a contained classroom, and my mentor and I hit it off really well from the kind of the interviewing phase of it, and we had a, a great experience the whole residency year. Our personality styles were very similar. Our work styles were really similar, and so um, yeah, we just we had a great experience. I was you know there four days a week in the classroom with her, and then one day a week I'd be at DU in classes full time. But um, it was pretty seamless. Oh, and we, we planned together. Uh, we would meet every weekend and do planning for the upcoming week, and kind of divide and conquer what we wanted to do on the lesson plans and just classroom management. You know, we were both kind of watching different kids and you know it's just nice for them to have two adults in the classroom that are checking in on them a lot and um, it was a great experience. Would you be a mentor in this program? I've thought about it yeah I mean I'm still in my first year of teaching so I'd like to finish this first year successfully um, and and would definitely be open to the, the the possibility of having a resident in my classroom. I think it it's just so great for the kids to have two adults dedicated to them for a full school year and I mentioned my parents were teachers and I know it's really different from like the student teachers that my mom would have cycle through her classroom during the year there'd just be different teachers starting and stopping and coming in and I think that consistency of having a resident in your classroom the whole year is great for the kids absolutely and I think too um, so just kind of thinking about being there all year I had a question but I lost it um, yeah, oh, I can't think of it. I'll go to my script. So thinking about this year and your students, 
you know, what, um, how are your students doing? They're doing great. I have third graders this year, so I, you know, I transitioned from this fifth grade uh, classroom to third graders, and the school, Gust has this platooning model, so I actually have almost 60 third graders um, compared to like 25 fifth graders last year. And they're, they're doing great. You know, it took me a long time to learn everyone's <laughs> names at the beginning of the year, but um, I, I love, love the kids. They really enjoy class. Um, they're very like, excited about math and science and feel lucky that I'm teaching that subject. I think the kids really enjoy it, and um, the classroom environment is fun. And so they're doing great. I mean, I won't get bore you with their data, but they're doing outstanding. Really? Yeah, they're doing Have you great. Seen, you've seen growth? Yeah, they, uh, we, we're taking uh, these periodic uh, tests that are fairly broad and cover multiple standards, and I've seen my kids just accelerating and outperforming the other schools in the network, and so I'm really proud of them. Good. Yeah. And yourself? I'm proud of myself as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've survived. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm coming back next year, so yeah, that's a good that's sign. Good. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. So do you think being a career changer... Uh, do you think that sets, you know, how do you think that makes mm -hmm. things different for you than other, either other residents mm -hmm. or, yeah? Yeah, well, actually, I was just reflecting on this today with my principal here, but um, she was asking me about my stress levels uh, coming off of this testing cycle, um, having done PARC for the first time. And, I, and I, I can honestly say that, like, having practice law in the types of, roles that I was in was so much more stressful and so much less rewarding than in what I'm doing here that um, I really think that I I just I, I don't get too over I don't feel overburdened I don't feel stressed out I feel very concerned about my kids and making sure that I'm teaching them things in a way that they understand but um, I think there's just some perspective that I probably bring coming from another career that you know, things just don't rise to that level of get, making me lose sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and professional relationships, I think, too. You know, having worked in a law firm and worked at a big public company, you're just navigating a lot of relationships and dynamics and politics. And it's no different than any other industry. Education is the same way. And um, so I think that, that you, a career changer probably brings some of those skills to teaching that are helpful your first year because it's just one thing you've hopefully got kind of figured out. Right, which makes me wonder, you know, working with your mentor. Yeah. Like, I wonder what your mentor learned from you. What do you think? I know she said she wants to, like, pick a resident in sort of the same, like, a prototype, which is a career changer, someone who's a little bit older, someone who's been committed to another profession for several years before coming to teaching um, as opposed to maybe a younger resident who's just right out of college that doesn't have that career background from before. So I know that it, uh, she, she is looking for the same model every time because it's worked for her before too, before me as well. Um, that's just a good match for her. So what is it that you think, um, you know? Sorry, before we move on, um, I'm going to switch cameras. Okay either what you brought or, or anybody, mm -hmm. what is it that it takes to be successful? Um, I think you have to be able to multitask pretty well in the, in the program because you're essentially doing a full-time job as a resident in a classroom. I mean, you're going to school every day for a full school day, and typically you're there before school for all the meetings that the teachers are attending and you're staying after school. So you really do have that full-time job. And on top of that, you're a full-time <laughs> a full-time grad student. Sorry, I might want us to say that over again. <clears throat> um, Go ahead. Yeah, so you're multi. You have to be able to multitask because you have a full-time job. You're at school, you know, four or five days a week working with kids. Um, you're there before school for meetings and staying late, and then you're going to school yourself in the evenings and on the weekends. And so you're managing two full-time responsibilities and. Um, certainly for residents that have kids and families at home, I mean, that's another layer of responsibility that they're having to juggle. So I think it really takes a, a amount of dedication and commitment to be able to multitask and feel kind of overburdened during that residency year. Um, 
And I think you just really have to be in it for the right reasons. I mean, it, it is so hard and it does take so much commitment that um, you have to be in it for the long haul. You have to know what the end game is and you have to be willing to, you know, put up with a really busy schedule for a year mm -hmm. to get to where you want to be. I think if you come in and you're not 100% sure that you want to teach, it's not a great place to experiment with a possible career change. I think it's definitely better if you know that that's what you want to do because yeah. um, then it's, you know, it's worth it. Okay, one last question. Yeah. We'll just see if we can push. And just <clears throat> talk to me a little bit about the integration of the coursework and yeah. the classroom experience. Yeah. What was that like? Um, um, integration, I guess there's an integration. You're bringing your, you're able to um, simultaneously practice what you're learning in the classroom yourself as a, a teaching resident, and you're able to practice it like the very next day um, in a classroom with kids. So I think it's a little different than the older models where you were in school, you got your education degree, and then you student taught, and you're kind of trying to remember all those things you learned in school. You're really getting to do this, you're on this dual track where you're getting to apply what you're learning every day in a real classroom with real students. Awesome. I knew that was going to be good. Okay. That was great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank All you right. so much. Yeah, you're welcome.